Coming up on Ag Week TV, many farmers are pitching in the towel on planting here in South Dakota in the Northwestern Corn Belt. We'll hear about plans for what could become North Dakota's newest sale barn. And there's a light at the end of the tunnel for milk prices. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Michelle Rook. June 10th was the last planting date for soybeans in the Northwestern Corn Belt under federal crop insurance. For Iowa, it's June 15th, and many farmers made the decision to take prevented plant. That included Doug Hansen, who planted his last field of soybeans on Monday. South Dakota is expected to have a record number of prevented plant acres, and he says that will be the case on his farm as well. I'd say between both commodities, probably um, at least 75 percent, maybe 80. He's done the math and says a prevented plant payment isn't real profitable on corn and soybeans are barely at break even on a per acre basis. Well most of our most of our bean uh, prevented plant are probably going to be in that um, 220 to 235 area and most of our corn was decent enough that you know, you'd pop in that 300 area and maybe a little more. Hansen hopes the just passed disaster bill will provide an adequate payment or a buy up on his prevented plant insurance. However, USDA hasn't provided the details yet. Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue says they're exploring legal flexibility to provide a minimal per acre MFP payment to those who file for PP and plant an MFP eligible crop. USDA was fairly aggressive in revising corn yield and production in the June supply and demand report. USDA lowered corn yield 10 bushel per acre, production by 1.37 billion bushel, and new crop ending stocks by over 800 million bushel from May. U.S. soybean yields in production were left unchanged from last month, but new crop ending stocks were raised by 75 million bushels due to lower exports. And USDA increased wheat production slightly, but lowered new crop ending stocks by 69 million bushel. USDA also cut 3 million corn planted acres in the report, which suggested more cuts coming down the road. As the market continues to try to determine acreage and yield, it will mean more volatility this summer. Marketing specialist Frain Olson says farmers need to be prepared to sell rallies in the corn market. I think there will be some really good pricing opportunities, but they're going to be very, very short-lived. They're going to be short pop spikes in the marketplace. Um, we're going to have a lot of price movement this summer. It's going to be very challenging. With the recent rally, he recommends selling old crop corn as well. And these are tremendous pricing opportunities, and, and I'm, I'm really trying to encourage farmers, don't, don't get too greedy. Take advantage of these. Make sure you get the old crop corn sold. He says farmers can move the corn later, but it should at least get priced at these levels. Minnesota corn and soybean farmers and farm group leadership shared their concerns about biofuels and other ag issues with Senator Amy Klobuchar. She says she's been working with Republican Senator Charles Grassley of Iowa and may have to introduce legislation to end EPA's abuse of refinery waivers. It was an emergency measure for small refineries, and just a handful were granted each year. But now dozens of exemptions are approved, which undermines the renewable fuel standard. In 2018, it resulted in 2.6 billion gallons of ethanol demand destruction, which also negates the gains from EPA's approval of year-round E15. They've just got to stop because we have enough problems uh, for rural America right now with commodity prices and weather uh, and the trade war. And you don't have to add things that are self-inflicted wounds. They do not have to grant those waivers uh, to big oil companies, but that's what they've been doing. The group also talked about the effects of the trade war and her recent legislation to lift the cap on Chapter 12 bankruptcy limits. A new livestock sale barn is getting closer to reality in Bismarck. Dean Ulmer and Jess George started working on it about six years ago, but it's been delayed by health issues and zoning confusion. However, as Jenny Schlecht reports in this week's Ag Week cover story, they hope to have Bismarck Livestock Auction up and selling soon. They come in, we, set, we weigh them, sell them, and they leave. Dean Ulmer and Jess George started working on a sale barn in Bismarck in 2014, but then Ulmer had to deal with some health issues and getting approval from the city of Bismarck has taken longer than expected. But George says there's a great need for this sale barn. Only 11 companies operate sale barns in the state. Livestock barns in general 
are decreasing. I mean, we lost four or five of them in the last four or five years. Um, and the ones that are here are really swamped with cattle. So I think it gives us an opportunity to help the ranchers move their cattle, get a better price maybe for their cattle. Their attorney, Chris Nias, says some of the zoning delays were caused by confusion about the operation. He says it's not an animal feedlot. The operation will sit on 10 acres just a few miles outside Bismarck city limits and will be a good neighbor in the community. There were questions about traffic and um, odor and all those other things that the public is, is concerned about. This isn't an AFO. This is not an animal feeding operation. It's not a feedlot. This is a sale barn. George says they're going to try to bring some modern touches to the business, but he's not ready to say what that will be. I promise you. We will, we will be a good outfit. You will not have to worry about us. They plan to start holding regular feeder and production sales in the fall. In Bismarck, this is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. You can read more in the next Ag Week magazine and at agweek.com. Dairy producers are starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel in terms of price. We'll have the story coming up. For home delivery of Ag Week, log on to agweek.com or call 800-811-2580. Big Boy Toys. Add more bushels to your hopper and money to your pocket by harnessing the power of air with Crary Wind Systems. Whether your beans are chest high or barely off the ground, Crary offers two solutions that add a constant stream of high velocity air to quickly feed crop back to the auger, eliminating bunching, reducing shatter loss, and increasing your ground speed. Don't let crop conditions dictate your yield. Check out the Crary Air Reel or Crary Wind System today. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. Emerge with confidence this spring, knowing your crops are off to a strong start with a Case IH Early Riser Planter from Titan Machinery. Case IH Early Riser Planters help maximize yield potential with precision seed metering and a flat bottom furrow to ensure consistent seed depth and early uniform emergence. Early Riser Planters from Case IH are available in a variety of sizes and configurations, including high speed and stack fold models. Contact your local Titan Machinery dealer today for more information on the latest from Case IH. Farmers take pride in growing safe, affordable, nutritious food. And since over 90% of U.S. farms are family or individually owned, keeping land and animals healthy makes sense for all of us. If you have questions about the food you eat, talk to the people who grow it. North Dakota farmers and ranchers are your best source for reliable facts on food and farming. Visit findourcommonground.com and become part of the food conversation today. Brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Checkoff. After four years of low milk prices, dairy farmers in the region are finally starting to see a glimmer of hope. At a June Dairy Month tour in South Dakota, I talked to one dairy producer about why he is optimistic for the rest of 2019. Dairy farmers like Greg Moles are coming off one of the toughest winters in recent memory. However, he's finally starting to see a turn in the market. Basis is up and we've edged, edged up to that $16 uh, you know, basis. Uh, that's where it's really making feel like that we're meeting, the, meeting our goals or meeting the, uh, the spending. Milk futures are even hinting a slight increase into late summer and fall of over $17 per hundred weight. It's a function of lower U.S. milk production. It's uh, hard to say it, but uh, uh, a lot of it is because of the winter. From dumping milk to the extra cold that it did on the cows, everything. He also thinks farmers are slowing their growth. 
everybody realized that we got to keep it stable. We can't keep producing much more. And with low prices, you know, nobody's going to do much for expansion. Also helping milk prices a drop in U.S. herd numbers. The one caveat is lower corn and forage production is increasing feed costs, which could cut into the higher milk prices. However, a strong safety net in the new dairy margin coverage program will also help cushion any drop in revenue. For livestock producers, taking care of their land and animals isn't just part of their job, it's part of their fiber. Jenny Schleck talked with a producer who says his business depends on making sure his animals are safe and comfortable. Thanks, Michelle. We're here with Kenton Hawley, the vice chair of the North Dakota Livestock Alliance. Kenton, what can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern, and it starts with their housing. I think that's probably one of the real basic things because that's where they spend their time. So we always make sure that they have adequate water, free choice, uh, food is always of high quality, and available for them 24 seven. And that they've got a good, comfortable, clean place to lay down because cows spend a majority of their time laying down. And so we wanna make sure that, that that time is optimal for them. Is there anything else that people should know about why dairy farmers put in the time and effort to take care of the animals in the land the way they do? There's a big demand right now by consumers to know where their food comes from. And I think that's okay. Because, you know, I go to the grocery store and I want to make sure that the things that we buy are, are good for us and that they're done in a reasonable method. And so if we can do whatever it is, if it's an open house, if it's an, uh, an exhibit at a fair or anything like, we can communicate that to our consumers to give them the confidence that they know that the, the food they're buying, that jug of milk that they pick up is, is done in a, in a way that has been environmentally sound, uh, animal care practices are beneficial for the animals, there's no abuse, the, the, the product is free of, of uh, antibiotics. They need to have that confidence and, and, and we want to make sure that that's the story that's getting out there. Kenton Holly with North Dakota Livestock Alliance, thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. You can read more in the next Ag Week magazine. Ahead on Ag Week TV, the late spring means some special challenges for fighting flea beetles in canola crops. And later we'll have some advice on preventing pests and diseases in your soybean fields. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less burning and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. When planting season comes around, time is precious and you don't have a moment to waste. This spring, keep your planters rolling with a user-friendly seed tender from North Star Ag. We have seed tenders for every sized operation from Meridian, Unverfirth, and JNM. North Star Ag also sells a variety of Valmar spreaders, the leader in air boom delivery, and is a full-service Meridian hopper bin dealer. Visit NorthStarAg.com to see our complete new and used equipment inventory or give us a call. 
How can one tillage tool handle most field conditions, residue types, and tillage practices? It takes a Renegade, the summer's VRT Renegade. Switch from vertical to aggressive tillage and anywhere in between. Adjust blade angles, tillage depth, and more on the go, all from an iPad. Get the tillage results you want, like only the Summers VRT Renegade can. For more information or a demo, contact your Summers dealer. This week's Crop Stop takes us to near Nakoma in northeast North Dakota, where smoke could be seen for miles one recent day. Kevin Waslowski and his son were out scouting a new canola crop for flea beetles when they decided conditions were right to burn out an old tree lot without any impact on neighbors or drivers. Kevin and his brother Roger farm about 6,500 acres with 2,800 of that in canola this year. Seedlings started emerging about a week ago and plants at the first two leaf stage are vulnerable to flea beetle damage. Well, it'll chew up the plant. It'll just, when the plants are small enough, it'll eat it completely. Yeah. We've had to reseed in the past because it, they've destroyed our canola. Canola comes with seed treatments for beetles, but that's only good for about 20 days. Waslowski says the later planted canola is holding its own because it's growing fast enough to stay ahead of the bug pressure. Our next stop is near Browns Valley in east central Minnesota, right along the South Dakota line. That's where we found Chad Pistorius planting soybeans. He farms with his two brothers, and he says they're way behind because of the wet spring. Rain and raining, and uh, the ground is actually saturated so bad that uh, the hillsides are holding the water. You can't find them wet spots, and it's too late. You either get stuck or you're pulling out, you're leaving massive amounts of the fields unplanted. Pistoria says he's done planting corn, although they didn't plant as much as they planned. He estimates about 10% of his acres will end up prevented plant. The weather's been more cooperative in the Western Corn Belt for those farmers still trying to plant. Will it continue into next week? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. Weather portion of Ag Week now. It's been well established how wet it has been this spring and into the early summer across the corn and bean belt of the United States. Here in the northern plains, though, the North Dakota Ag Weather Network revealing a little bit of a different story. Rainfall since mid-April, 415, showing only around one and a half to two and a half isolated three inch plus amounts across northern North Dakota, northern Minnesota, and then across the southern part of this same area. It's much heavier, more like a four to five inches at many spots. That's why southern North Dakota has been so wet. That, of course, extends down into South Dakota. Central and northern North Dakota, same thing in Minnesota, has actually been a little dry this spring. Percentage of normal rainfall, more than 100%, meaning wetter than average across the south. But look at these numbers. A lot of 69, 65, 54, and then a lot of 28, 38, very dry conditions across the northern part of the area. At least it has not been hot so far this summer. Jet stream meandering, but generally keeping the heat well down south. There'll be some, oh, some 70s and 80s and a stray 90 through the Corn Belt, mostly 60s, 70s, and a stray 80 in the northern plains over this week anyway. The really cool stuff is staying mostly up in Canada. The really hot weather is going to be down in the deserts, and it'll be like that. As far as rainfall goes, a couple of areas of concentrated thunder showers in the Rockies and you guessed it the corn bean belt northern plains this week's showers should be mostly of the nuisance variety will continue to be relatively mild to slightly warm across the ag areas of the United States next week no real heat is expected for the rest of June there is some evidence that we may get a slow moving meandering low into some part of the northern plains Great Lakes area which could provide some locally heavy rainfall and much of the corn belt will continue to be wet Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. 
You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. With the all-new Green Fit system from Reichardt, plug and plays finally a reality when using John Deere AutoTrack guidance with existing new products like the Challenger 1000 series or all-new C-Series Rogators from Butler Machinery. Green Fit is an authorized navigation interface that utilizes existing John Deere AutoTrack guidance systems to steer most Challenger tractors and sprayers. Green Fit eliminates the worry of learning and converting to a new steering system when buying an industry-leading Challenger from Butler Machinery. Learn more about Green Fit at butlermachinery.com slash greenfit. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less firming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Do you have a vested interest in land? The upcoming Great Plains Land Expo is a must-attend event for landowners, developers, mineral interest owners, farm operators, and investors. Join us on Wednesday, June 26 in Fargo as we hear from a variety of industry leaders speaking on topics relating to land, energy, and minerals. You'll discover ways to capitalize on agriculture and energy opportunities and learn how to become a better steward of our natural resources. Early bird rates are available, so register today at GreatPlainsLandExpo.com. The cool wet spring delayed soybean planting for many farmers, but most of the crop is in now and starting to grow. So it's time to address pests and diseases. In part three of our season-long planting to processing series, sponsored by the North Dakota Soybean Council, Rose Dunn has some advice on the best way to battle those potential problems. Soybean aphids may be tiny, but they can take a big toll on yields. They were brought to the U.S. from Asia to Wisconsin in 2000, and by the next year, they had already migrated to North Dakota. They can fly, migrate long distances, hundreds of miles. In North Dakota, we, we've seen 40 to 60 percent yield loss from soybean aphid when populations are Hi. Canodal advises you to scout fields early when the crop is still in the vegetative stages, then do it every week. They like moderate weather in the 70s and 80s, not too hot or too wet. They could start showing up in the next few weeks until late August. The aphids are tiny but are a bright yellowish color. Very tiny, like most insects. Um, it's only an eighth of an inch long and they're kind of uh, yellowish Mountain Dew color. The aphids reproduce quickly and their offspring can reproduce again in just 10 days. That's one reason it's so important to control them. Only spray when you're at the economic threshold of 250 aphids per plant. Then you also want to see 80% of the plants infested. With current prices and profits so low, it's tempting to dilute the chemicals or use cheaper alternatives. But Canodal says often that's not an effective strategy. In the last few years, soybean aphids have become resistant to some chemicals. Even though it might cost just a little bit more, we need to keep the resistance low in the population. Because once it gets established, that's going to be the dominant insect. Another problem producers might face because of our cool wet spring is white mold. NDSU plant pathologist Michael Wunsch says one way to prevent it is to increase row spacing to as much as 30 inches, although that can cost yields. When we are below 50% incidence of white mold, we almost always maximize yields in our narrow row spacing. Wunsch says by changing row spacing and correctly timing fungicide application, farmers can effectively manage white mold and maximize yield with little to no additional input costs. This is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. You can read more about controlling these pests in the next Ag Week magazine. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, how drones and robotics will change agriculture in the next few years. Ag Week is excited to bring you the Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information right at your fingertips. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. 
plus see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you wherever you are. Download the Ag Week app today. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week magazine. Reaching over 70,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable, and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than 3 billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. Drones and robotics will become more and more valuable on the farm as farmers face worker shortages and other challenges. Agriculture was an important part of the fifth annual Drone Focus Conference in Fargo. Precision ag technology can help lower costs and increase production, and drones are a big part of that. Matthew Rolick is the North American sales manager for Tyrannus, a company that offers multi-layered imagery with data collected by satellites, manned aircraft, and drone technology. Rolick says the company's imagery can be used in a variety of ways all season long. The best return on investment is, is amplifying in-season agronomic decisions. So whether a lot of it has, I would say, would be like tissue targeted tissue sampling, uh, zone creation, variable rate fungicide, and harvest priority. Rolex says they're generally a good return on investment from the technology, but the cost varies according to factors like how big the field is and how many times during the season it's monitored. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or download the Ag Week app. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you next week.